Greetings everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If this is your first time here, or you've been hiding in the shadows, please step forward and give that subscribe button a try. And don't forget the notification bell. Set that one to all, that way you'll be reminded of every time I upload a video, which tends to be daily. If you would, please look at your screen here and wish everyone a happy birthday. July was a little full there, so <laughs> happy birthday to each and every one of you. I hope your day is as great and special as you are. Thank you so much for remaining a supporter of Back to Ashes. If you would like to learn how to become a member of Back to Ashes or would like to buy me a coffee as a special thank you, that information can be found down below. With all of that being said, it is now time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro and ad will play, I'll read the first story and ad will play. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. Warning, some of these stories may contain material not suitable for all. Listener discretion is advised. Oh yeah, I just remembered. The first two stories of this video will be about the 4th of July since for everyone that lives in America, Tomorrow is Independence Day, so happy 4th to those who celebrate. Let's get started, shall we? I always celebrate the 4th of July. I usually celebrate with my family, but this year I couldn't because I moved to a different city and I didn't feel like traveling. I was going to celebrate with my girlfriend and some of her friends, but her friends canceled last minute, so it was just me and her. I packed some towels and snacks because we were going to watch the fireworks on the beach. When we arrived, I discovered that there were hardly any people. My girlfriend and I got out of the car and started walking to the beach. We sat down on the soft sand and waited. We both had swimsuits on under our clothes because we were planning to go swimming after the fireworks show. Eventually, the fireworks show started and we both watched. It lasted about 30 minutes and then it ended. When it ended, we both stood up and took off our clothes. We got into the water and started talking. We swam a little bit and then decided to get out. When we got out, the time was 12.34 a.m., we wrapped ourselves in the towels and began walking back to the car. As we were walking, I saw a figure behind my car. It was too dark to see what it looked like, but I could still make out a shape. As we got closer, I noticed that the person had on a hood, so I couldn't see their face. I turned to my girlfriend and pointed out the person. She looked at me and nodded. I could see that she had noticed it too and that she was frightened. I looked at my girlfriend and told her, at the count of three, run back to the car. She agreed, and I started counting. Three, two, one, go. She ran and got into the car. I then began running, too. Right when I made it to the car door, the person jumped out and tried to grab me. I dodged them and opened the car door. I jumped inside and locked all the doors. Right when I locked the doors, the person started pounding on the window. I drove off and then never looked back. This next story is actually three stories broken into three pieces. So I'll say uh, number one, number two, number three. Cool? All right. Number one. My family asked if I wanted to go with them to check out the fireworks on the 4th of July. I was only 16 years old at the time. I really didn't want to go. Not that I had anything at all against the fireworks, but I really wanted to go out drinking with my friend Matt. We figured that he would break into the abandoned school building in the area. Lots of teenagers would do that, and it was a well-known place for drinking and smoking weed where the police would have left you alone. I met up with Matt, and he had scored some weed too. I didn't smoke it all too often, but every once in a while I would. He was a bit worried that, being the fourth, a lot of people would have broken into the school. 
Whenever we had gone before, we had never come across any other teenagers. Like normal, we snuck through an opening in the fence that surrounded the place. At that point, everything still seemed to find. There wasn't really anything to indicate that anyone else would be there. We went behind the building and there was a broken door we used to get in. Still, there was no indication that we weren't alone. We found a room and we began smoking the weed and drinking a little bit. It was really nice. We weren't too far away from the firework display that we couldn't hear the fireworks going off in the sky though. We were probably in there for over an hour when Matt gave me a really weird look. Did you hear that? He asked me. I told him that I could hear the fireworks. He shook his head and told me that wasn't what he meant. I think I heard someone in here. I thought maybe he was just enjoying the weed a little too much. He insisted, though, that he heard something in another room. When I suggested it was probably just more teenagers drinking, he decided we should go look for them and see if they wanted to hang out. I really didn't care too much to do that, but I went ahead and went with him. We were walking down the hallway. I still hadn't heard anything. But Matt even told me again that he heard some noises. I began to think that maybe Matt was just messing with me or trying to scare me or something. I had to brace myself, waiting for him to try and scare me or whatever. I then heard something too. It was a firecracker. It had to be. I may have even heard it before, but mistook it for something from the display. There had to be someone in one of these other rooms letting off fireworks. No big deal, really. Fireworks were illegal for just anyone to have. The displays were done by the city. We came here for illegal drinking and illegal smoking, so it made sense someone might come there for illegal fireworks. So we found the room. There was an open doorway and there was a little bit of light coming from it. We decided to go through the doorway and introduce ourselves. Matt told me he'd offer them some weed so they didn't think we would narc on them or anything. We looked into the doorway and froze. There were two people in the room, but they were dressed as clowns. One was sitting on the floor with a bunch of firecrackers in his hand. The other was standing up and facing the door. He had a huge sparkler in his hand. You know how when someone has a sparkler, they write words in the air? He wrote, hi, with the sparkler to us. The other one quickly lit a firecracker and then threw it at us. We just turned and ran out. It was too odd. We remember previously when that whole clown thing was going on a year earlier. We had seen many YouTube videos of clowns doing weird and dangerous shit. We were terrified at the weirdness of what we saw and what might happen. We looked back once and the clowns had not come out of the room to follow us. But we didn't stick around there, though. We left the building in a huge hurry. I don't know. I don't think we were in any danger. Like I mentioned, the clowns didn't even try to follow us. But... It was just a weird thing to see and go through. Number two. This is a pretty freaky thing that happened to me while back on the 4th of July. The people who live in my neighborhood tend to really go all out during this time. For days, they are letting off fireworks, but on the 4th, everyone brings out the big ones, and they do them all night long. I was home alone. My parents had gone to visit relatives for the 4th. I stayed home, being a teenager. It was always great when you get the house to yourself for a while. I didn't have any parties or anything like that, though. I just took a few days to watch TV and eat a lot of junk food. On the 4th, it was actually a bit louder than usual. The fireworks started during the day. I couldn't tell what the exact fireworks being used were but I knew that they were very loud. When it gets to be nighttime, most of the people in the neighborhood go out on their porch to look and watch or set off their own fireworks. I really didn't care too much to do that, though. I just remained in the living room and tried to read a bit. An hour into nightfall, it was loud. The fireworks were constant. I imagine that this is what it would have been like on the Blitz in World War II. 
I couldn't watch TV, and it kept making it very difficult for me to read. As I was sitting there, I suddenly heard a loud noise that definitely was not a firework. It actually sounded like glass breaking in my basement. I immediately looked up for my book. The first thought was that someone was setting off some fireworks close to my house, and it hit and broke that window. We had one of those basements that was not really underground on one side, sitting on the side of a hill. Worried that the house might catch on fire, I got up and ran to get our fire extinguisher. I grabbed it, got up and ran over to the basement door. During this, the fireworks were still going off, of course, so it was a bit nerve-wracking. I ran down the stairs to our fully finished basement, and I didn't see a fire. I flipped on the light and almost fell on my ass when I saw someone standing there. There was a broken window, and he was over by my dad's bar, and he was robbing bottles of liquor and putting them in a bag. He of course noticed when I turned the light on. Turning around, he saw me, and at first he did nothing. He was a really big and scary looking dude. I didn't know exactly what to do. He didn't have that problem though. He came towards me, brandishing one of the bottles. Fortunately, even though I was hesitant and he was bigger than me, I remembered that I had brought the fire extinguisher down to the basement with me. Acting through what seemed like impulse, I pulled the lever and sprayed the guy with the hose and nearly knocked the man off of his feet. What was important was that it gave me time to run up the stairs, close the basement door, and lock it. I called the police immediately, telling them that someone had broken in. They came, but the guy was long gone by that point. He still stole several bottles of alcohol, though. The police filed a report. They didn't catch the guy. Thankfully, he never came back either. Number 3 when I was a junior in high school, I had problems with a bully named Brett. I never knew exactly why he picked on me, really. I wasn't nerdy or unpopular or anything, but for some reason, this guy just really didn't like me. And he was much bigger than I was, so even when he tried to get me to fight him, I avoided it. I'll just give you a couple examples so you know what kind of guy Brett really was. Once I was sitting in homeroom, the teacher wasn't there. As I was sitting there doing my homework, I felt something hard hit me on the back of the head. He had thrown a book at me from several rows back. Once, he had a friend of his hold me and he squeezed a water balloon on me. He went around telling everyone that I had a wet dream. Yeah, that one is kind of weird but a lot of stupid junior students still laughed at it. I was happy when summer came around. He didn't live by me, so I knew I wouldn't have to see him for at least three months. The first month of vacation went by like a dream. I played baseball on a local league, and we had been winning nearly every one of our games. Our manager wanted to take us out for pizza, and then to see fireworks after the game on the 4th of July. We won our 4th of July game. The pizza was great. And then afterward, we went to the park to watch fireworks. It was pretty crowded that day. We put down some blankets and got ready for the show. As I was sitting there, I noticed Brett and one of his buddies, the one that had held on to me during the whole water balloon thing, coming in my general direction. We were all still in our baseball uniform, so I tried to pull my cap down a bit in the front to make it seem like I was someone else. I didn't think Brett would really do anything. Nothing when I was there with all of my teammates and our manager and coaches. But still, I didn't even want him to know I was playing on a baseball team. He did notice me, though. He looked right at me. He then elbowed his friend, and he motioned over to me. They both laughed. I assume it was because of my baseball uniform. I don't know. He seemed like the kind of guy that would find it funny that I played. But they didn't give me any problem at that time. They walked by, kind of close to me. 
He kept trying to make eye contact with me, but I did everything to avoid him. I was unsettled for a while, but when the fireworks started up, I quickly forgot about it. It was an amazing display, and I almost found it quite patriotic and fun. Well, into the display, I even completely forgot that I had seen Brett to begin with. If you've been to a firework display, you know that they often end with a few minutes of constant fireworks. It's loud and quite amazing. Many of us were standing up during this part, although we had been sitting for the majority of the display. During the finale, I felt something from behind push me. I didn't fall over, though, because it wasn't that forceful. However, when I turned around, I saw Brett and his friend standing there. Suddenly, my face got hit with a lot of light and pain. I had to close my eyes because of the pain, so I didn't know exactly what had happened at first. I was to find out later, though, that Brett had lit a Roman candle and sprayed it right into my face. In spite of the sound of the fireworks, I could hear what happened next. Our team manager ran and grabbed Brett and told one of the other coaches to go get park security. Another coach grabbed me and tried to see if I was okay. Fortunately, I had closed my eyes quickly enough that there was no damage to them. I had some little burn marks on my face, but that was all. Brett spent some time in juvenile hall. I don't think it really did any good. He was the exact asshole he was when he got out. So for context, my partner and I got our townhouse halfway through 2022. We bought the house in our hometown, so we just felt like it was meant to be. The first couple of months were amazing, and we had so many game nights and had cute little family gatherings. For it being a townhome, it's perfect for our little fur family. At the time, a cat and a dog. When we moved in the house next to us, separate from the townhouses, it sat empty until 2023 when our new neighbors moved in. We also got a second dog in early 2023. The new neighbors were not the type to come say hi and have a conversation, and we were okay with that. In May 2023, my partner and I had come home around the same time, and we both parked out front on the public street. My partner had parked near the edge of the neighbor man's property line, and next thing we knew, my partner was getting called an arsler and other profanities that I'd rather not repeat. The neighbor man was furious my partner parked in front of his house on the street because his girlfriend would not be able to back out of the driveway in the morning. My partner nicely told him he would move and did while also informing him it's a public street and are plenty car distances away. Well, the next day, Anel had gotten into my partner's hire. Hmm... What a weird coincidence, right? Well, luckily our house came with pre-installed cameras from the previous owner, so we just powered them back on, and since, we felt like we needed to use them now. It was from then I decided to park out back and let my partner park out front so it's easier for them to drive. Now, we thought it was all over with the neighbor man because he was quiet all summer and halfway through fall of 2023. November rolled around and my partner was taking the dogs out, and the neighbor man was outside as well and decided to say, I'm going to kill your damn dogs. And my partner responds with, hey, that's not necessary. And the neighbor man went off on my partner again, spewing harsh slurs and threatening to kill us and the dogs with the guns he has. He could not have a conversation or hold a coherent thought. The last thing we wanted to do was call the cops and would much rather him just act normal. Needless to say, the non-emergency cops were called that night and the report was made. He thought the neighbor man had given up, but nope. The next day, he showed up with a pit bull. 
My guess is he borrowed it from a friend to try and intimidate us. I ignored him and took out the dogs as usual, and the neighbor was out back with the pit bull. But I guess he heard me come out front, so he decided to bring the pit bull out front as well. The pit bull was not on a leash, and his yard is not fenced well. As soon as I heard his front door open, I grabbed my dogs and ran inside. I just didn't want to risk my dog or myself getting hurt. That pit bull didn't last long as I heard a cry of pain from it all night. That dog was gone just as quickly as it had shown up. The winter months were silent as I guess it was too cold for the neighbor man to cause any havoc. That was until two days before Valentine's Day. My partner was getting ready for work, and I was just sitting on the couch when I heard a human barking. For context, the neighbors across the alley from us have two large dogs that are outside barking all day. My dogs are quiet. Well, as I heard a human barking, I go to check the cameras, and I notice the neighbor man flicking off the cameras and calling us the R slur and then goes into the peeing stance along the side of his girl's house. He also was throwing trash into our yard over his fence. My partner called the cops once more, and they gave us the same talk as the last time they came. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that the neighbor man yelled at the cop for accidentally parking in his driveway. It wasn't until later, when I was looking back at the camera footage, that I noticed the sound of a can hitting the ground. Luckily, it hadn't rained that night, so I went outside to collect the can, and it was filled with human urine. We followed up with the cop over the phone and asked if there was anything they could do now, that it was not just intentional trash tossed over, but pecans and bottle bombs. Nothing really happened, but the trash got picked up at some point by a random man. We thought the neighbor man would have calmed down by now, but things have just been getting progressively worse. The neighbor man seems to think that every time the camera goes off, that we're watching him. The cameras are motion activated, so that means anything moving triggers the cameras. The amount of notifications I've gotten from cars driving by, setting the camera off, these are cameras that came with the house that we only felt the need to change because of a yelling neighbor man at 4 a.m. and a nailed tire. Like, we are not interested in the going-ons of these weirdos. Even if the motion light is an issue, we can talk about that too, but all this guy wants is to act tough and call people our slurs. We get the sense that there is some kind of deals going on as a neighbor man is unemployed without a license and regularly has cars parked in front that he leans into for extended periods. Look, it's not my business. You mind yours and I mind mine. He does seem very paranoid about it though. Today, they got some kind of slip from the city posting on their door. We don't know if it's either utilities or some sort of trash find if that random man was with the city. Recently, the neighbor man has been triggering the cameras and saying out loud, you got the right one, or you started it, so I'm gonna finish you, right into the camera's view. At this point, it had been a progressively escalating campaign of threats and harassment that we constantly try to not engage with. We don't know what to do anymore. I'm scared to even go outside because I know he's watching me. And on top of that, today I noticed his window open in his bathroom, which has a direct view of our kitchen. I don't even feel comfortable in our own home. I don't want to sell it, but I just want the same joy we had the first couple of months before this crazy-ass neighbor man moved in. Do you all have any tips? My husband and I live in a duplex. The rent is good for the area. Our neighbors were great. Landlord was pretty cool. 
Unfortunately, the landlord decided to sell his properties and retire in Florida. The new landlord raised the rent a bit, causing our old neighbors to move after the previous agreement was up. So, next door was up for rent. One day, I'm working from home and somebody rings the doorbell. I'm not expecting anyone. I don't answer because I am on a call. Then they started knocking and eventually pounding their fist on my front door. I asked my boss if I can call them right back. It's a random woman. She asks if I lived here. I say yes, but I can't really answer any questions. I ask her to leave because I'm working and she interrupted my call. She says if the landlord's name is X, she just wants to verify it's them because she wants to rent. Eventually, she leaves, and the next week, I see her moving in. I notice she has four kids. The duplex is basically a house split down the middle, including the parking. First few days were pretty normal. My neighbor eventually starts leaving them at home, all alone. She's always at work or always out having fun. She's never home, and they're always home. One day, they were playing outside. We expected a bit of noise. It was mid-winter break. Then her kids invited their friends over, and soon it all went downhill. My husband and I have one truck in a car. The kids started running all over the yard and throwing a football near the cars. I would have been fine with it if they would have played on the side only, but they didn't. I ignored it. I wanted to talk to their mom when she was home to ask her if they could only play on their side. Later that day, I peeked outside my window and saw the kids sitting and leaning on my truck. I saw the oldest go near my truck and it looked like he was about to take a piss. I went livid. I went outside and yelled at him to pull his pants up and told them all to get away from my truck. The oldest gave me a dirty look. His little friend shot me the bird. I spoke to their mom soon after she got home. They stopped playing near our cars. That same week, I had to make a noise complaint to my landlord. The noise was unbearable. I could feel the side of the house shaking from how much jumping and noise they were making. The mom apologized. The new landlord told me to just call the cops next time. I feel like it's a waste calling the cops for noise like this. She doesn't want to be involved in any neighbor problems. Last week, the neighbor's new boyfriend put up a portable basketball hoop for kids. It's on their side of the driveway. They don't lean on my cars, but they play behind my cars. I've asked them to not play near them, but they don't listen. We've told the landlord about the issue, and she doesn't care. Youngest kid plays in the road, and cars honk at him to get out of the way. I want to destroy that stupid hoop. Now I'm having issues with my mail. I've caught the two youngest ones opening my mailbox on more than two occasions. Today, I was outside heading towards my truck, and I noticed one kid opening my mailbox. I asked him what he was doing why he was opening my mailbox. The kid turns back and ignores my question and heads inside. Another problem I've seen is that they throw whatever mail isn't theirs on the ground. Apart from this, they litter all the time. I've complained to the landlord and maintenance guy about the littering. Maintenance guy says he's seen it too and told the new landlord but doesn't care. Back to my mail issue. I feel like talking to their mom, but it seems like they don't listen to her. It's like they just do not care. I've seen the oldest one get arrested before. The cop showed up one day and went inside their home and took him out. I feel like she's one of those moms who just has kids but doesn't really pay attention to them. They're just kids. I don't want to ruin their life by calling the cops for them opening my mailbox, but I have had mail gone missing. I've had packages gone missing too. My landlord doesn't do anything. My lease isn't up anytime soon. 
I had to renew in January because we can't afford a new apartment or house. My husband got laid off. This is a weird situation. I've been trying to be nice because I think our neighbor might be a bit mentally slow, but it has my husband on edge. A little bit of backstory here. New neighbors moved in about a year ago. We didn't talk to them for a month or two. We are just kind of introverted and not really trusting of people. Eventually, my husband introduced himself to the husband, then found out really quick that they are a hot mess. Screaming all the time, fighting, CPS called on them. A whole mess. My husband is naturally a helper type of person and would do anything to try to offer advice on parenting because they both don't know how to raise their kids, especially the dad. He even told my husband that. Would help during the winter with firewood, etc. My husband's a good dude. But it started to become too much. Anytime my husband would be outside, obviously working, the guy would try to come over and hang out. It got my husband to the point he had to tell this grown-ass man, Hey, please ask before coming over. Text me or call out if I'm busy, etc. Don't just come over here and expect me to hang out, especially when you see me mowing or working on something. I like my space. Pretty nice, but the guy did not stop. That would deter him for maybe a day. Then he'd wander back over with my husband, getting more and more annoyed. Then my husband noticed the night that the guy looks out of his blinds to see if he was outside. So my husband feels like he's being watched and stalked. It got so bad a few days ago, my husband blew up on the guy screaming at him in our front yard. Plain as day, said, Stop coming over here. Unless I say it's okay, you are annoying the shit out of me. Always over here with this, that, or that excuse. Trying to bum shit off of us. Throwing me off and stalking me. I don't want to always hang out. This is my space. I shouldn't have to be on edge in my own yard. Dude. Later that night... He tried to come over, and my husband went off on him again, but even worse. And the guy just said, Bedtime? Like, what was so freaking funny about that? This made the guy stop for about two nights. Then one evening, my husband came home from grabbing dinner for us, and when he parked, the guy tried to come over. My husband didn't notice because he was carrying in the food, but I did. I slammed the door and turned our lights off, and the guy just walked back into his house. But the guy tried again, and my husband was like, dude, what the hell is your problem? I think he might be mentally challenged because I don't know anyone who isn't. Who would do this and not be extremely embarrassed? If I got yelled at by someone, I wouldn't even be able to show my face around them for a while. Now my husband still sees him in his blinds every now and then. It prompted us to buy a security system. We now have cameras pointed outside and monitoring them just to make sure he's not going to do something creepy or like steal from us. If we are gone, you never know. He did steal from us one time. Even if it was firewood, my husband caught him. How would you even handle this situation? It's getting so out of control, and it's actually starting to scare me. I feel like I can't be outside without being watched. I'll never cower in this situation, though. My husband and I both stand our ground, but I just feel uneasy and creeped out. Just get a life, please. I did a background check on my neighbor. He has several criminal offenses to his name. To list a few, two DUIs and two criminal damage charges in the second degree. So, not great. I'm going to heed the advice here and not interact with him at all. 
I'm going to the police department today and ask about the calls to my property as well. My dad is also an attorney, which is lucky, so I'm going to talk to him. So, some background information. I have lived in apartments and townhouses for the past three years. I moved recently to a rental home that is an upgrade in pretty much every way. Two-car garage, fenced-in backyard for the dogs, great kitchen, and what we thought was a quiet neighborhood adjacent to a 55-year-old-plus community. My wife and I moved here in November. Fast forward to last week. It's trash day. I put my trash can out, as well as some other boxes I've been meaning to get rid of. For context, one of them is a very large Lego box. It's a large box with smaller boxes inside and tons of plastic bags. It was packed nicely and neatly. Apparently, while I was at work, there was some pretty strong wind and it knocked over both my trash can and the Lego box. My trash was strewn over my neighbor's yard and on the street. Before I continue, I admit this is 100% my fault. I should have secured the box better. This isn't my first time living in a house with trash pickup, and I just didn't know better. Live and learn, I guess. So I get home from work and find my trash can knocked over in my yard and the boxes and various other trash thrown at my front door. On top of that is a letter taped to my door from the county warning me that I had violated county codes for littering. I genuinely felt very bad this had happened and went looking for other trash but couldn't find any. The next two days, more trash was piled up on my doorstep. A few days ago, I had found where the trash was and picked up the rest. I ordered a ring camera after that. Present day. I am taking my trash to my can and my neighbor is letting his dog out. He is an old, retired white man. My wife and I are also white. This is important later. I have not talked to this man before, and so I just smiled and said hello. This is the man who called the county and had been piling it on my doorstep. I asked him why he had done that instead of just knocking on my door and informing me. If that had been the case, I would have gladly picked up my trash because it is my responsibility. He said that I wasn't home. I asked why he didn't knock on the door when I was home from work. He said he had called the cops the night before to have us cited for littering. So, anyways, we talked a bit about the neighborhood and who lives where, etc. Then, out of the blue, he starts on this 20-minute long racist tirade, which has nothing to do with the topic at hand talking about how black people are ruining the neighborhood and how he harassed a black guy by punching his windshield after a car accident and having a gun pulled on him. It's insanity. Then he starts just blatantly calling black people monkeys. I was so shocked to hear anyone speak that way. I personally have never heard such disgusting language. He also asked me if I lived with a woman, to which I replied yes. Then he asked if my wife was white, to which I said yes. This guy had mentioned how the previous tenants, a black family, did not keep up with the yard and couldn't learn how to maintain it. This guy is absolutely terrified of someone who is not straight and white moving in next door to him. I did not engage with him after this and went back inside. I am just floored. After having this conversation, I was too stunned to speak. Do you all have any advice? Obviously, he has violent tendencies and likes to cause trouble. So, my upstairs neighbor moved in this past December. At the time, I guess she moved in with her boyfriend. In the almost three months, I have had countless miserable nights, and it is impacting my health and overall happiness in my own home. One night, they put together furniture. That's what I was assuming. Using power tools at 10 p.m. 
I let that pass. They've stomped around, benefit of the doubt given since they had just moved in. Sex noises, thanks to very creaky bed and a woman who was very vocal. I also am aware that sex is something we could hear when we chose to live in a large apartment building and doesn't bother me, but I know I wouldn't really hear it if they didn't stomp around first. I often would only hear the bed and stuff after I was woken by their stomping around. And I mean, it sounds like a herd of elephants up there. No exaggeration. I spend the next few weeks being the better neighbor. I'll get used to it, right? Christmas week comes and I guess they left town because it was quiet all week. Thank you, God. They return and it's immediately back to the same old bullshit. I opt to make a noise complaint to management, and it barely has any impact. The couple has a couple of loud fights, and it seems he moved out. Now I'm down to one stomper. She's a very loud stomper, mind you. Weeks later, I leave a very nice note on the door letting her know of the issue. I experience some improvement. Two weeks later, it gets bad again. I email the property manager and ask for a call. She listened, takes notes, offered to mediate. I appreciate that because it seemed she wants it to stop. She calls me back after talking to the tenant, who says it must be her dog. Uh, no. A dog doesn't bother me, and a dog doesn't stomp to the bathroom and flushes. I experience some relief. Property manager tells me to call security when it happens overnight. I have. She's back to her same old self again. Two weeks later, it's back. The same old shit. I truly am losing patience, losing sleep, and just don't enjoy being at home. I expect to have another combo tomorrow with the property manager. I want to ask to be moved to the top floor at the management company's expense. This neighbor is not going to change her ways, and I refuse to write out her lease like this. Any thoughts or other ideas? I would love to sleep all night and not hear those footsteps or when she has guys over. I'm looking forward to your thoughts. Hello all, so I live in a flat above a shop and have done so for the past four years. My grandparents own the building and rent the shop to a couple of women. The ladies who rent the shop have been bitchy since day one, but over the past year, things have deteriorated. One lady in particular, Lorraine, has made it her business to essentially bully me in my own home. I work from home and have done since COVID. This certainly doesn't help, but I should be able to work from home and not feel like I have to go out to avoid being bullied. Whenever Lorraine is in the shop alone, she will repeatedly bang doors and make as much noise as she possibly can. If she hears me moving above her, she will stand there and bang the same door several times. When she leaves the shop in the afternoon, she will bang the front door so hard that the floor shakes. This mostly stops when the other lady is in there with her. When they're both in the shop, I'll get an odd bang on the ceiling if they hear the floorboard creak, but it's nothing compared to when Lorraine is alone. I turned a light switch off in the downstairs hall yesterday, and one of them banged on the wall. I can't do anything in here without consequences. The joy I feel when they close at 4 p.m. is like nothing else. How freaking sad. Sometimes they'll come in on a Sunday or Monday. They're usually closed these days. And they'll start drilling and hammering. I understand they might need to do a little DIY, but it comes across as inconsiderate and nasty. I spend all day trying to avoid moving around. When I do eventually have to walk to the bathroom or kitchen, I will tiptoe about. My friends and family keep telling me I shouldn't have to do so, but if I made a noise, then the banging starts. It puts me on edge and I feel constantly anxious. 
I really don't understand why they have such an issue with me and why Lorraine feels the need to make my life miserable. You'd think they'd try to be nicer considering my grandparents are their landlords. I have brought this up to my mom and grandparents, but they're not willing to say or do anything about it. I've threatened to go down there, but my grandparents care too much about what other people may think and said they'd be angry if I did. I feel completely alone and miserable. I can't afford to move out, and I feel trapped here. No one is willing to support me on this. Does anyone have any advice or in a similar situation? I am looking for some kind of thumping noise to put on my headboard and play throughout the night which is quiet enough that it cannot be recorded and cannot be the reason for my neighbor to call the cops. First, let me tell you what's been going on. I've been having issues with this neighbor since he came into the downstairs apartment. It has come to the point where he knocks on the bed headboard throughout the night to keep me awake. Our beds are stuck to the wall and are above one another. They cannot be moved around. At first, I thought it was just pillow noise, but... They are violent thumpings that wake me up for my sleep. It is extremely irritating having to fall asleep with a thumping noise in your ear, which you know is being caused on purpose to make your life hell. I've tried foam and silicone earplugs and all they do is amplify the thumping. I've been sleeping with my noise canceling earbuds playing deep brown noise, but he's been harsher the past few weeks, and now I can hear the thumping through my earbuds. They disrupt the sound. It's so violent that I feel it in my skull and my stomach. This is making my life hell, and it's been disrupting my sleep in a way I cannot describe. I was away for one month staying with my parents, where I finally was able to sleep. But now I'm back, and I sleep so poorly I feel like a zombie. I tried speaking to the apartment manager and asking him to kindly ask the neighbor to keep quiet. He did, and the neighbor from hell stopped his shenanigans for two days. Now he's back at it even stronger than ever. I spoke personally with him and asked him if there is something that I do that disturbs him, so that I can stop doing it and he can finally stop banging on the furniture. He was not cooperative whatsoever. This is why I'm looking for ways to make his life held back. I found plenty of bass and drums and bass sounds on YouTube which go for 10 hours and I've tried playing them throughout the night but the anxiety that they might call the cops on me kept me from falling asleep. I don't want to be caught retaliating because he is the one that is causing the disturbance. The problem is that his knocking cannot be recorded since it's the vibrations and the impact that gets you, not the loudness. I truly cannot prove that he is doing this. I'm sorry for the rambling on. As you imagine, I'm emotionally loaded. I hope you can help me find a way to retaliate. I plan on asking to have my bed moved. Until then... I will need to find a way to make his life even more hell in return. I live on a property down a long dirt road that isn't really big enough for two cars in some places. It has some sharp corners you can't see around. It gets bumpy from the rains that we constantly have to maintain. It dips up and then down in some areas. We have an unspoken speed limit of 15 miles per hour, which myself and most of all my neighbors abide by. Usually I'm driving anywhere from 15 to 20 or so going down and up it. Maybe once a week you'll end up passing another neighbor down this road. Not very often, but when you do, we usually have to make space for each other. One of my neighbors I have run into on a few different occasions run this road, and it has always been the most inconvenient of places. 
around a corner or in a generally tight area. This neighbor has reached out to my landlord each time, saying I'm driving recklessly and that my landlord needs to talk to me about it because I might hurt myself or someone. Yesterday, same as usual, neighbor coming down from a blind corner as I'm coming up with a good 30 to 40 feet from one another. I'm doing probably 18 miles per hour or so, and for convenience sake. I pull onto the shoulder of the road quickly and stop completely to give my neighbor the right of way. In this moment, I think to myself, wow, we should get one of those convex mirrors to put there because we totally didn't see each other. And then they're driving past a hooping and hollering at me from within their car. And so I know it's coming. My landlord texts me later, the message saying, I was driving like a maniac, almost lost control of my car and crashed into them. And my landlord better do something because if I hurt them or someone in their family, there's gonna be a problem. I called my landlord, explained the situation and apologized for their having to mediate. My landlord is totally siding with me, also knows this neighbor is ridiculous with all of this, so I'm not worried about my living there or anything, but I want this ridiculousness to end. This neighbor does not seem like someone to reason with, and I imagine they feel they could do no wrong. Should I just keep living my life and ignore this person and these events, or... Should I confront them in some kind of way? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true Neighbors from Hell stories. Before I go any further, I would like to give a very special shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Tina Mead, Mrs. Interscare, Sugared Spite, Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Tammy Slayton, Amy Glimco, Christy Elias, Anita V, Dova Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Les Crispin, Patty's niece, Denise S, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all so much for being a pillar for Back to Ashes with your support. I can't thank you enough. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you kindly. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourself and stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.